1974 is one of those years that the BA family still talks about. It was the first of many state championships for BA, and now on the 50th anniversary of that historic year, we are paying tribute to the men and coaches who helped to put BA football on the map. Randall Mash from the class of 1975 joins athletic director Jason Matthews for a special look back. Tell us a little bit, are you from Nashville? Did you grow up here? I know you didn't know, grow up knowing anything about Brentwood Academy because it didn't exist, but tell me not, not at early all. childhood. I, uh, I was born in Hillsborough, Texas, which is about 60 miles south of Dallas. And uh, my dad was in the Air Force when they closed down the Air Force Base. My mom was from uh, Franklin area and, and uh, Smyrna area, so we ended up moving to Tennessee. And so at that point, uh, uh, I entered school in the third grade in, uh, in Davidson County. And uh, from there, went on to uh, Oak Hill when Oak Hill started up. And, and then uh, Oak Hill was going to start a new, uh, or they were, I think they were going to cut down into classes. So uh, Mr. Brown says, well, what's going to happen to the seventh and eighth graders and the upcoming ninth graders and whatnot? And so that's when the thought in uh, Mr. Brown's mind for something were for us to go. And so at that point on, you know, I thought uh, I was uh, living in South Nashville, uh, had gone to Wright Junior High, was, was going to go to Glencliff. Then they started the bus and thing. So uh, at the time, my parents said, well, let's go see if we have a different alternative to do. And uh, if it wasn't for a neighbor, Mike Wilson, who was a grade above me, Bless his heart. We live next door to each other. And, and Miss Wilson, I, I said this to Mike the other day, says, if it hadn't been for your mother talking to my mother, we would have never won, I don't think, that first championship game. I know I wouldn't have been on it because, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been there. So did when you're at Oak Hill and Mr. Brown is talking about starting up Brentwood Academy. Right. I don't know how public or how much you knew about that, but was it I'm going to Brentwood Academy or were you thinking I'm going somewhere else? My parents are making me come to Brentwood Academy. Do you remember that? Well, Oak Hill, I really didn't want to go. Yeah. I mean, coming from a, a public school to a private, you know, you just don't want to fit in. I didn't fit into the, the private school sector at first, but uh, I ended up enjoying it more. And there was no doubt when, uh, you know, we love Mr. Brown. Yep. And so when he started uh, Brentwood Academy, there was no uh, other problem other than finding money to pay the tuition. You yep. Know? Yep. But uh, when we did that, me and my sister, uh, we, we started, uh, she was a um, one of the first, I think it might have been the first class to actually graduate. And uh, she was two classes above me. And like I said, I, uh, I went to uh, Wright Junior High as a seventh grader. And then when I went... Uh, to the eighth grade, uh, I repeated the eighth grade at Brentwood Academy. Okay. So that put me back a year, and I would have graduated with Mike Wilson's bunch. So it's again, it's funny how things work out for the best, and this is definitely one of those deals. So, so talk about you show up Brentwood Academy as a repeat. They're called reclass now, so repeat doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Now everybody's reclassed okay. as a reclassed eighth grader. Yeah. Um, you walk in here, and what are you thinking? I'm thinking, I'm looking at everybody else, and I'm thinking, where's the rest of the football team? Yeah. You know, he got it right when he coached with us. Well, it was about, what, 10, 11, 12 of us, maybe? And uh, he said two of them quit right off the bat, so we had, what, nine? So, uh, and in fact, he sent my sister uh, a, a, an invitation to join, but Terry spelled her name T-E-R-R-Y. He didn't know it was a girl. But uh, she still turned it back in next day and said, uh, Coach Flat, appreciate the offer. Um, I'm a girl, so I don't think that's going to work for me. So Coach Flat's first invitation to join his team, he invited a girl to join he his did. football team. That's good. Yes. Um, so did you know Coach Flat before that? I did not. Did not know him from Adam. And uh, uh, like I said, I, I was shocked. At the whole whole thing, you know, I had played junior pro football before, and, you know, you've got maybe about 20, 25 kids on it. But when I looked around, I said, now, this is going to be junior high, right? 
Well, you know, come to find out, the, the highest grade we had at the time was sophomore class. So here was eighth grader that knew nothing about nothing and playing against, uh, you know, freshmen and sophomores. So did you know you – I mean, I assume you were quarterback. I always wanted to be a quarterback. Or did you get told you were quarterback? That's You're going to play quarterback told, for us. I was told that. And what did you think you were coming in playing? I'm thinking, you know, wide receiver. I played wide receiver at Oak Hill because I was short. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, get them out of the way a little bit. You know, maybe <laughs> throw a pass every now and then and whatnot. But that was fine with me. Uh, I enjoyed the camaraderie of football and, and all the, the things that you, you learn from football. So as I went, boy, I appreciated the game more and more. But, um, yeah, I, I, it was, again, from what I've read in the newspaper articles, he uh, handed me the ball and said, well, Grady, you, get, you want in? I said, eighth grade, I'll be an eighth grader. So I guess he thought in his mind, you know, this guy, if he sticks around, he's going to be with us for a while. I'll give him a shot and see what happens. What was your first, uh, maybe not first day, but first couple weeks of Coach Flat? Did you, did you know that there was a great coach, which would be amazing if that's the case? Or did you think, uh, this is going to be rough? I think I, think I was kind of intimidated. Yeah. You know, I was, uh, I'm a, a really great follower not much of a leader, and I grew into that as time went on. I told people when they asked me before, uh, I was a pretty good leader. I mean, a, a follower, rather. But as a leader, it took time for me to get to the point. I said, usually a quarterback's got to be. You know, you've got to yeah. kind of you know, snap it. it sometimes and, yeah. and, and, and point your finger at yourself a lot of times. But, but you know, lead, uh, even though you may not be that kind of a person, but that was part of the deal. You know. So, Coach Flat, what? How would you describe him? I mean, the first impression. Uh, the first impression was well, evidently this guy knows what he's talking about. I mean, he <laughs> he knows, you know, this guy's going to play this, this guy's going to play this, and whatever. So, uh, again, well, wasn't many options though, right? Nine players. Not at mean? all. Not at all. I mean, we could have used my sister, I guess, That's to right. make it ten or eleven. But but yeah, I was in awe of Coach Flat. I uh, didn't know anything about him, but. Uh, as time went on, you you got that trust in him, and uh, it was it, it's just unimaginable the things he has taught me throughout my football career, and that's why I really got into coaching myself. I said, you know, I want to give back somewhere and somehow, so I ended up coaching at um, at White House Middle School right. and stayed there about right. twenty seven years. Yep. Let's uh, let's kind of go lateral a little bit. You got into Brentwood Academy, and now take the football aside. Talk a little bit about school. It, it was a small school. Very um, small school. Uh, you no faith-based, right, at that time? And right. No, nothing. I think we were just we were just uh, a shoot-off from, again, Oak Hill. Yep. And uh, when I looked around, open lockers like they have now, uh, just very small, but everybody knew everybody. That was, you know, kind of neat. Like that, you knew all the the teachers, uh, and uh, I mean it was a great environment. Uh, we did things just like we've always done, uh, but but uh, like I say, it was a great start for me to begin that eighth grade year at, at the Brentwood. How, do you remember how many people were in your class? I think maybe we had like thirteen. Okay, <laughs> something like that. And I heard there was no. Dining hall like we have now. No, we was, we, you know, we had the, out. Uh, the usual uh, Big Macs that somebody would go down to Brentwood and, and get us a Big Mac or whatever and McDonald's. And we did that for a number of years. And and uh, some people brought their lunch, which was fine. Yep. But a lot of people did the did the hamburger deal. Were you a, uh, I don't need too many specifics, but were you a good student? No, I was not. Okay, so you I was, need help. I, I definitely, <laughs> I love football. I love football. I love sports. I love track. I love, but I was not a good student at all. I, I uh, uh, didn't know the techniques of studying. I, I uh, uh, watched maybe too much TV at home. I was after football practice. I was tired. I was ready to give up and and take a nap and, and do something else. But I was not a very good student. But in time, uh, I, I I learned that you know that's part of the deal. You know, you're here to get an education so it further yourself and and uh, 
help your family get by rather than uh, play football. There was no no inkling of me joining Dallas Cowboys. That was for sure, you know. But uh, was there a teacher or, or a mentor that you can look back besides Coach Flat that you thought that person helped? Um, Donnie Pope was there at uh, Oak Hill. Yeah. And I think I had him for different classes and uh, religion classes and whatnot. Yeah. And he was a great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah. And um, uh, I think he kind of led me on to help me get get through uh, the the newness of Brentwood. And, and he was always there for me if I needed something. Yeah. Until, you know, I, I learned a lot of the other coaches and whatnot. Coach uh, Husky, great fella. And uh, just a great coaching staff. I can remember they all enjoyed each other. And and I still hear stories about uh, Mr. Brown and Coach Flat. things I didn't know. That, that's uh, I don't doubt it at all. It's all true. <laughs> but but uh, Nothing is embellished at Brentwood Academy. Not I'm at all. You, not at all. Well, okay, so now let's go back to football. You start football. You have nine. Maybe, maybe you get up to 13. 12 players. I don't know how many of you guys had your first season. Tell me about that first season. You go out there and you got a great coach, you got a willing team, and what happened? Well, uh, you know, I can, I'll never forget the gear that that we wore at that time. Uh, the white helmets, uh, the little bitty BA in, on the logo. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, the white pants. You can mm-hmm. buy them at any Walmart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it was, it, it, you know, I think we might have been put in jail if, if uh, we could got away with those helmets. But nowadays, uh, it's great that they have what they do now for the, for the kids. Uh, but uh, like I said, it's it was um, uh, something else to, to have that first game, you know, the jitteries and whatnot, and especially playing quarterback. You know, uh, going against your first thing, I can remember, uh, I believe we went up to White House, which is, you know, kind of funny that I'd end up right, there. Right. And uh, I can remember my dad, he would take photographs, 35-millimeter uh, photographs of the game. And we used those, a lot of those photographs uh, for the yearbooks and whatnot. But uh, I can remember uh, Coach Flat. Uh, there, of course, same as Mr. Brown standing there with his hands folded, looking around, and and he's thinking, "Oh my gosh, what are you, what are we getting into, or whatever." But but uh, we had, uh, like I said, we took our lumps most of the time. That that first and second, uh, that third year, my third year, or uh, again, we talked the eighth, ninth, tenth, twelfth, uh, nine and two, ten and one, and then thirteen and zero. Oh. So those last three years, we really came on and did well. But again, those 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 first two years really humble you because yeah. again, uh, you're playing at everybody's homecoming, and and you know they're taunting you, they're laughing at you, uh, you're the butt of everybody's jokes. You know when something comes out in the paper, it's you know, you know, match did this, you know, you had to fumble this or interception or whatnot, and it it, it wears on you a little bit, but. Uh, I I knew in, in Coach Flat he really believed in us and and that made a difference. He he never quit on us and we started to believe in ourselves, which which made us you know the end confidence up what we builds. Did today. Yeah. It builds. So again, I, I love that part of the story. When we 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 visited you last year and I heard a little bit of that. It's unique in today's world and culture to people to think Brentwood Academy was the homecoming game and mm-hmm. Brentwood Academy there was. The positive is there's no expectations, but the weight that must have had on you. I, I always say the weight to be Brentwood Academy now is a heavy, heavy weight. Oh, yeah. Because if you have a, a season, a bad season like we had last year, the world is crumbling. Yeah. And you guys were getting beat up, and then it started turning around. Do you, If I ask you what was the low point, do you remember the low point? Oh, yeah. I'll never forget it. Um, I've answered this question many times from – Tennessee and, and everybody else, but uh, my junior year we played Bellevue. I think it was Game Three. Uh, we lost thirty-three to seven. From that point on, uh, I can remember getting off the bus, coming into the locker room. I think I left my clothes still on. Just went straight to Coach Flat and said, "You know, I don't know 
if if I'm supposed to be <laughs> the position. I don't know if it, I, I was just so low, and you know he put his arm around me and he said, you know, this is what you need to work on. This was your, and he he put, you know, the confidence in you to to keep going to keep trying, and um, that ended up being the last game. I ever lost in a Brentwood Academy uniform. As a Tim Tebow moment. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, I tell people, and they say, you know, I think it ended up being 21 games in a row and, and ended up senior year 13 and 0. But uh, that's that's the key that I tried to implement in, in my coaching is to uh, really take time to talk to the kid. Each kid's different. You've got to know which buttons to push. Uh, I was not mentally tough at all, and I, and Coach Flat knew I can jump on Mash's behind, and 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 he may end up crying on me or whatever else. But but uh, I was not mentally tough. But then as time went on, he knew all you got to do is put that arm around you, give you a little you know tenderness or whatever, and it works. Some some guys you got to kick him in the butt, you know. So sometimes you got to do it that way. But I was just the opposite. And he know which he knew which buttons to push to to motivate motivate me. So it was. Uh, so let, let's fast forward to the fifty years. Fifty years ago, we come into the seventy four season. You guys had a great season before that, okay. but did you know it was going to be special? I did because we had all been there together for so long. That's true. I mean, uh, again, I looked at the 1970 photograph, and again, there's four people that made it to that senior year. <laughs> but, again, uh, if it hadn't been for Mike Wilson's, the, uh, Dan Coley's, you know, Tim Perry's, the, the other folks that, that pushed us in that way, and I... I I think we get way too much credit a lot of times. You know, it's those guys, those uh, 72, 73 teams that motivated, motivated us to get the job done that we did do. Uh, so the, the season starts. You guys, do you remember a moment when you thought, well, I mean, it's going to be special. Y'all didn't lose. But it's, do you remember a moment where maybe you were about to get beat and something? Well, I can remember the first game with David Lipscomb. And they had just killed us uh, the last uh, couple of games. Yeah. I think we won uh, uh, the last two, but especially the last game that I would ever play against uh, Buck Dozier's team, the Mustangs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was something we ended up like 52 to 14 or, or whatever it was. And, and I'll never forget the, the photograph of Coach Flat and Buck Dozier shaking hands at the end of the game. He had his hands on his hip, giving you that look like, you know, did you really run the score up on me or what, you know, what was it? But, uh, yeah, David Lipscomb was an NIL team at the time, along with um, Jolton and, um, let's see, who was the other one that we played? But uh, if you beat an NIL team, that was a big deal. Yeah. And especially David Lipscomb. David Lipscomb was always, always tough. But, yeah, once we, we beat them and beat them pretty bad, uh, we said, well, you know, we can actually do something with this. Because if we can, we can hang with these guys, you know, we've got a chance. And then that next time we played Bellevue, we won 20 to nothing. We shut them out. Uh, so we were on our way. You know, that gave us the confidence we needed to uh, – to run the table on it. How did the culture change in the school, in the hallways, as this transformation is happening on the football field? Because, you know, whether people like it or not, I, I say it all the time since I've been AD, the culture of how a lot of things happen athletic-wise, especially football, mm -hmm. it dictates what the culture is at school. Mm -hmm. When we were having a bad season, that seemed like things were – people were irritable. It seemed like things were not going as well. But when you guys get on that roll, can you tell a change in the culture of the school? Well, you know, with it being small like it was and, and being the situation that we had, we were just a very close-knit group, football team and students. Uh, even the kids that were, you know, above me at the time or below me, we all intermingled with each other and got along. Uh, and, and with the success of the football team, 
it just snowballed everything else. I think it helped a lot of the basketball mm-hmm. teams and, and, mm-hmm. and that, you know, we can do this. You know? um, talk about, you know, you've already mentioned him a little bit. Coach Flat, deservedly so, gets a lot of credit for this. What's Mr. Brown's role during this whole three-year run? How much did you see him? How much was he at practice? I, th- I, th- <laughs> I think uh, – Mr. Brown kept Coach Flat in line. <laughs> you know, I can remember. We'll have Coach Flat come in here later and tell us if that's yeah, true or you, not. <laughs> you might have to edit this part out. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, we were playing in Florence, Alabama, and uh, I had run a play, and uh, I was on defense, and it hit the guy, and I think he fumbled. So we ended up getting the ball. Uh, guy comes in and calls the play, and uh, – Say uh, right twenty nine belly, and then I'm in the huddle, you know, doing this number here, looking around. He says, "Come on, Mash, call it, right twenty nine belly." And I'm still doing the number here, twenty nine belly, ready break. We get up to the line, and somehow I get behind the center, and he snaps the ball. Of course, I fall, but I don't know where I'm at. And uh, uh, get back in the huddle, call the same play. What's wrong with this guy? You know, and and he fumbled the ball again. He said, "Get him over here." <laughs> And he says, Mash, don't you know what to do? Well, you know, and then Mr. Brown's looking at me. He's getting ready to push me back in the game. Mr. Brown said, no, 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 no. He grabs Mario and says, his eyes are dilated, coach. He's not going in the rest of the night. So uh, he, again, I've heard great stories that those two have uh, kept each other in check a lot of times. But, but uh, no, Mr. Brown was such a great a headmaster to have and and you know you, you took his his sternness at times but he could be z- just as loving as anybody else uh but but he was a and like i said he's the only one i knew coming from oak hill yeah so that that made it positive did um so you make it through the season you go on your run in the playoffs we win a state championship and you know it just it just from night to day, from bottom feeder to top of the world, did y'all realize what happened? I mean, you, I assume you played on Friday or Saturday night. Mm-hmm. You come back to school Friday Monday. Night. Do you realize, holy cow, what just happened? Or you're like, okay. No, I can, I can remember uh, after the game at, at South Pittsburgh on that uh, Friday night and – when it was over with, we're all hooping and hollering or whatever. And then I'm taking my uniform off, and I'm, once I sat down, I'm thinking, you know, what do I do Monday? What do I do now? <laughs> and it, it, it hits you like a lead balloon going, you know, it's over. Yeah. I may never play football again. Yeah. And uh, when you put as much time and effort as something uh, it, like we did – it's a shock for me. It was like, what do I do now? You know, what, 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 do, where do I belong? But uh, yeah, it was, it was a shock. But uh, it happens to all of us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now that we're a couple years removed from that, what do you, what do you take away today and give to your family? What, what do you remember that Coach Flat gave you? And maybe even Mr. Brown too. But what yeah. what what do you take away from Brentwood Academy, your football days, and again, uh, make sure you read the players that I had for the twenty seven years. It's important that you let them know right off the bat that you care about them. You truly care about them. That you don't give them a line. You you know you're not you not. I'm just want you because you know you're you can run a four flat forty or whatever. I truly care about you, and that's what I tried to instill in the kids that I had. That you know, football is only going to be here if you're a seventh and eighth grader for two years. Then you're on your own, going somewhere else. You know, I, I wanted to instill in them uh, things that's going to lead them throughout their lives. You know, football is a game; we do it for fun. But later on, you're going to have to have the responsibility of uh, having a family. And, and doing the right thing and, and, and helping each other and, and, you know, learning so much that, that football brings 
to human beings that a lot of times we miss out on. But And that's what's great about my son. My son is at, uh, head football coach at Hunter Middle School in Sumner County. He's been there, I think, 11 years now. And uh, I hope that I instilled in him the things well, I know I have because I see it in, in takes that I see of his games and whatnot, that, that they do the same thing. And, and we, have, we have these one-on-one -on -one talks. What did you do back when you had a parent and you had to talk about this? This is, well, yeah. you know, everybody's different, right? Yeah. Ryan, I said, you know, this, I, I taught back in the 80s. You know, a lot of things you can't get it. You know, you can't do, do or you can't it, it, say. <laughs> no, it's it's a whole new ball game. I said, but this is what I did. You're gonna have to float your own boat on how to do it and whatnot. And and, and luckily he gets to talk to Coach Crabtree at Beach High School, and they're great buddies and whatnot, and and talk to each other about certain situations and things like that. But um, yeah, it's it's I, I I know that it's helped him. And uh, that's all from Coach Flat. So it, you know, it goes down. Pays it forward. Yeah, it does. How many of the, uh, how many of your teammates do you keep in touch with? Really, uh, Mike Wilson, uh, because, like I said, I've known him when I first moved to Tennessee, and uh, we try to get together as as much as we can. But I would say Mike, you know. Yeah. I'm, Pretty tight with him. Do you know, looking back at that moment, and again, we celebrated at Brentwood Academy the 50th anniversary of it. But do you know at that moment how that changed the school? Do you do you look back as a participant in that game and realize how that changed the school? Not really. Well, let, let, I, I, <laughs> I, I I think that. I'm, I'm, I'm sure when I went and I looked in that locker room, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, here those guys are again. <laughs> Is this mascot died yet? Is he still with us or whatever? And I know th they hate sometimes to keep harping and hearing the, the, the praises of the 74 first state championship team, but it, it'll always be the first. Yep. It'll always be special and always be Coach Flat's first. And uh, I, I know I left a, a note to one of the players in his locker when I left, uh, when we met in there. Yep. And I said, uh, I was not a very good player. I wasn't a great player, but I was on a great team. And I hope that's what y'all have. I hope y'all have a great team, not an individual team, you know, that you enjoy each other and, and praise each other, win or lose. Uh, each other's efforts and what they do. Well, let, let me just say this. This is not about my words to you because I, we want to hear about that. But let me tell you someone who's benefited from your guy's success. It is a heavy, heavy weight to carry to be at Brentwood Academy. I've been here for for um, three different coaches with, with Ralph Potter and with Cody White. Mm -hmm. Well, four, Jacob Gill and now Paul Wade. And I'm telling you, it's 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 a it's a heavy burden and it's Obviously, Coach Flat. It's obviously Mr. Brown. They set such a great foundation. But you guys, um, the story, uh, and you can't tell the story of the championship without talking about the three years before that. Right. Um, I think it's inspired a lot of our kids, especially after last year's losses. I think it's inspired a lot of our kids that, you, you know, it's not individual. It's all together. Right. But from someone that benefits from this, we want to say thank you because you guys – whether you like it or not, you are that symbol that we look at. And whether you feel it or not, our kids do not sit there and go, oh, Lord, it's the, <laughs> it's the cow pasture. They don't say that. They're like, oh, my gosh, that's this is great. good. So we, we want to keep promoting that, and we want everybody to understand that that's our story. And that yeah. started the culture that we are today. Yeah. So yeah. From, from someone that benefits from it, we, we appreciate it. Let me ask you one more question um, because the game is changing. We talked about this when, when I was at your house last mm -hmm. year. Um, We've got NIL, and t not your NIL that you remember, our NIL now that's, that's, that's going through Tennessee. We've got um, kids that are going through schools. They have agents. We've got uh, people that are opting out of bowl games. We've got people that are transferring if they're not starting at different things. For someone that was out there practicing on top of thorns and on dust and not having the newest equipment and all that stuff, what do you think about football and the transformation now? It's like you've hit the lottery. 
Yeah. It really is. And, and, and when I talk to the players, again, I say, you know, the same thing. Do you realize how fortunate you are? Do you really know and appreciate the things that you have? Because when you have nothing, when you start with nothing, you don't know any better. You know, but, but when I see that field, when I see that locker room, mm -hmm. when I see those hel running helmets, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh. What a great opportunity for these kids if they'll just take advantage of it. Amen. You know? Mr. Mash, we're looking forward to celebrating your team tonight. We appreciate all you did for the school. We appreciate you sitting down with us, and we are just uh, thankful for all you've done for BA. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. Absolutely.